we're going to go into some balanced hardware requirements. Obviously, the balanced door is different than a normal conventional door. It has some, some quirks, some things you have to take into consideration. Part of it is, up at the head of the door, you need space for that check and guide channel assembly which we saw. So in other words, you do need a header. You do need, do need that header to be three inches high by, in this case, six inches deep. Could be as minimum as five inches deep. This being extruded aluminum material, this being formed up bronze or stainless steel material. They both need roughly that three by six dimension or a minimum three by five. Again, at the jams, you have a similar type condition. You need somewhere for that hinge shaft to go. So if, you're, if you do have a full frame, it has to be, again, three inches on the face to house that uh, hinge pivot assembly. This would be an extruded aluminum version. This would be a formed up version. What you're going to see is that on the extruded aluminum version, balanced door manufacturers aren't curtain wall manufacturers, so their systems have applied stops. In formed up material, you have more flexibility. You can have a pocket stop, and we'll go into that a little bit later. But again, you've got basically a three inch by five or six inch frame configuration. Now we're going to go a little bit more about that floor box. We, I talked about that. Again, it's, all it is is this half inch high floor box sits on top of the floor. And the normal dimensions in the face are three and five eighths, seven inches from exterior to interior and being a half inch thick. Generally, it butts up the half inch high threshold, would butt up against the uh, floor box, no, no floor penetration. This would be a generally an exterior type door application. But there are times when you might want an exterior door and an interior vestibule door to go along with it. And on the interior vestibule door, you probably don't want a threshold. You want that floor material, uh, tile, terrazzo, whatever, to run through the opening and don't want a threshold. Well, Basically what you do then is you can take that half inch high floor box and partially or recess it into the floor, into your finished floor, because generally your terrazzo, your tile, your marble is going to be at least a half inch or more thick. So even though it's recessed into the floor half an inch, the finished floor, it's not going to penetrate your concrete subfloor. And again, the beauty of both of these applications is that you're not penetrating that concrete subfloor. Therefore, the general contractor does not have to worry about locating, or in some cases mislocating, floor cutouts for the large cement cases that are required with a center pivot or uh, offset pivot floor closer. So in other words, you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. They can go ahead and pour their floor and be done with it. 